Hi there, everyone. Welcome to The Daily Gardener. I'm your host, Jennifer Ebling. It's June 20th. There is just nothing that can beat eating fresh food from the garden. It seems every meal around here has fresh basil, lettuce from the garden, and little cherry tomatoes. The other day, I was at my olive oil store, and they sell this little gizmo called the Zip Slicer. You load it up with your cherry tomatoes or grapes, and then you slice them all in one quick motion. It's fantastic if you eat tomatoes and grapes a lot. Cuts down on the prep time. And I think around here we've been eating caprese salad about three times a week. So there you go. Check it out. The Zip Slicer. I'll put a link to it in the show notes. Here's today's brevities. It was on this day in 1757 that the botanist John Bartram wrote a letter to Philip Miller. Miller was the chief gardener at the Chelsea Physic Garden from 1722 until his death. He corresponded with botanists from all over the world, including John Bartram, and he'd even trained William Forsyth, after whom Forsythia is named. When Bartram wrote to Miller, he shared some of his personal preferences as a gardener. First, he shared his compulsion for variety in the garden. He said, one or two is enough for me of a sort. Later in the letter, he shared his dislike for plants that weren't hardy in Pennsylvania. He wrote to Miller saying, I don't greatly like tender plants that won't bear our severe winters, but perhaps annual plants that would perfect their seed with you without the help of a hotbed in the spring will do with us in the open ground. And it was on this day in 1803 that President Thomas Jefferson sent a formal letter to his private secretary and aide, Meriwether Lewis. Lewis was a captain in the 1st United States Infantry. Jefferson wrote him to request that he might lead an expedition up the Missouri River. Jefferson never mentioned botany in the letter, but he clearly was thinking about it, and Lewis knew that. And as he was preparing for his trip, Lewis connected with Benjamin Smith Barton. Barton had written the first American textbook on botany, and he gave Lewis a little crash course on the subject. It was on this day in 1861 that Sir Frederick Gowland Hopkins was born. In the 1700s, Dr. James Lind had made it known that eating limes would cure a sailor's scurvy. Hopkins' work called these substances accessory food factors. Today, we know them as vitamins. And it was on this day in 1892 that Benjamin Lincoln Robinson was appointed the curator of the Asa Gray Herbarium at Harvard. When Robinson took over, both the herbarium and the library were in dire straits. Robinson was instrumental in acquiring funds and expanding the growth of the herbarium and library. Today, the Gray Herbarium and Library are still housed at Harvard at 22 Divinity Avenue. And it was on this day, a hundred years ago, that Isabella Abbott was born. She was the first Native Hawaiian woman to earn a PhD in science, and she became known as the First Lady of Limu, or Seaweed. When she was a little girl, she spent hours gathering seaweed for her mother to cook in traditional Hawaiian foods. I found an excellent video online of an interview that Leslie Wilcox did with Abbott back in 2008. When Wilcox asked Abbott about her love of studying seaweed, she said, There are so few of us. There are thousands of people who work on flowering plants. Flowering plants mostly have the same kind of life story, so they become kind of boring. They make pretty flowers and make nice smells and they taste good, but they're not like seaweeds. With every one you pick up, it goes through life a different way. 
It's like a game. I bet myself the whole time when I cut into it on the outside, I say, I think this might be such and such. And then I get to some magnification on the microscope. And nope, I'm 100% wrong. So let's begin again. If you'd like to see that video, you can check for the link in the Facebook group for the show. Just search for The Daily Gardener Community on Facebook. In unearthed words, here's a poem from Alice Mackenzie Swaim called Green Summer. No farther than my fingertips, no weightier than a rose, the essence of green summer slips into a waiting pose. The tilted bowl of heaven has spilled its blue and gold among the vines and grasses where autumn is foretold. Skylarks trill the melody, crickets cry it over. Summer hides her mystery in fields of hay and clover. Today's book recommendation is The Hillier Manual of Trees and Shrubs by John Hillier. This book is considered a classic in horticultural literature. The best part about it remains all of the notes that were compiled by members of the Hillier family. Among all of them, they had an amazing amount of direct experience growing plants and assessing their performance in different regions. For today's garden chore, don't forget to pinch back some of your perennials. This is also known as the Chelsea Chop. The simple technique helps control height and delay bloom. You can use the Chelsea Chop on a number of herbaceous perennials in your garden. Plants like mums, lysimachia, helenium, aster, sedum, and so forth. Finally, here's something sweet to revive the little botanic spark in your heart. It was on this day in 1831 that the botanist and founding member of the Tory Botanical Club, Co. Finch Austin, was born. He was a noted expert on the mosses and liverworts of North America. To give you an idea of his fearlessness while he was collecting plants, here's a little story I ran across. He was visiting a brother in New York, and he decided he wanted to climb High Tor. Austin climbed the mountain, stopping along the way to add specimens to his shoulder bag. When he reached the top, he surprised his brother and handed him the specimens with instructions to meet him at the base of the mountain. His brother realized that this meant Austin was going to descend along the most dangerous face of the mountain. He tried to stop him, but Austin did not relent. His brother waited for him at the meeting place. After a while, and without a sound, his brother suddenly appeared. He came bearing specimens and had a huge smile on his face. Thanks for listening to The Daily Gardener. And remember, for a happy, healthy life, garden every day. The Daily Gardener is produced weekdays in lovely Maple Grove, Minnesota. You can find complete show notes over at thedailygardener.org and be sure to share the show with your garden friends. You can find The Daily Gardener on all your favorite social media, Instagram, Twitter, and Pinterest, and of course, Facebook. While you're over at Facebook, don't forget to join The Daily Gardener community. Just search for these three words, Daily Gardener Community. The group will pop right up and then request to join. Finally, I want to thank my team at Podfly Productions, where my fabulous editor is Eric Begay. Have a great day in the garden, and we'll see you tomorrow.